On average, people who change jobs tend to make more money than those who stay at the same company. But where they can fall behind is their retirement savings. Joining me now is Fiona Gregg. She is the Global Head of Investor Research and Policy at Vanguard Investment Strategy Group. And Fiona, before we get into your tips, how much money is being left on the table here? Yeah, you know, this is considerable. You know, millennials, all of us, we can expect to have nine jobs over the course of our careers. And each time we switch jobs, we typically see a pay increase, which is really good. We're progressing in our careers, but we're seeing a slowdown in people's retirement savings. And that slowdown can add up to a tune of $300,000 lower retirement wealth by the time we were we can retire. Wow. So let's get into the nitty gritty because you lay out four things to pay attention to when switching a job. And I want to break down each one because they're all important. The first is enrollment. So walk us through what we have to do there. Yeah, absolutely. So 60% of plans actually auto enroll their workers right when they're hired. So chances are you're going to be auto enrolled. But if you're not in one of those firms that auto enroll you, you better make sure that you participate in the plan, that you sign up for it. So that's step one, is literally just enrolling. And the next thing you step, say, yeah. say is to maintain savings momentum. So what exactly does savings momentum mean here? Absolutely. So typically, when we're in a plan over the course of years, we might get auto-escalated up each and every year. We're saving more and more with each passing year. So over the course of five years, for example, my savings rate might go from three all the way to 8%. However, if I switch jobs and I'm auto-enrolled, well, my next employer may still have a low default savings rate, and that could pull my savings rate back down to three or four. So an important step that people need to take when they switch jobs is to maintain that savings rate um, to the tune of what they were saving in their last role, or just make sure that they keep that high, even if the default savings rate is low. And you mentioned employer match. We hear about this all the time. How do workers best take advantage of those match programs? Yeah, every single employer is different. And uh, so what's really important is that you take time to find out what is the match? What, what dollars and you know what is the formula that this employer offers? And make sure that you don't leave money on the table. So for example, uh, many employers might offer a match of dollar for dollar up to 6% of your pay. Well, in that case, you won't want to you'll want to make sure you're contributing at least six percent so that you're not leaving employer match dollars on the table. And I always had a question about this, because let's say you move to an employer who matches less than your previous job. Should you split the difference or just go with that match? Or is there a strategy at all there? Yeah, I would take whichever is higher. Mm -hmm. So if in your prior plan you were contributing, let's say, 10 percent and your new employer only offers a match up to 6%, stick with the 10%. You're taking full advantage of the match and you're maintaining savings momentum uh, with your prior role. Awesome, and finally, you say to stay invested. So is that a common mistake workers make when, when changing jobs? And, and how can you make sure that you avoid that? This is such an important point. So a couple things. First, we see one in three workers actually cash out when they leave an employer. And that's really bad news. You wanna make sure you are leaving those retirement savings in a dedicated retirement account. So that could mean either leaving money in my old employer plan or rolling that money into my next employer's plan or into an individual retirement account. And if you move it into an individual retirement account, one mistake we see people make, Alexandra, is those monies can often land in cash. And we want to make sure that people take that second step of not just moving the money over or contributing to an individual retirement account, but also investing it in something like a target date fund um, or an age appropriate investment allocation. Mm -hmm. Cash is not always king in every single scenario. So that is some great advice. Fiona Gregg, Vanguard Investment Strategy Group, Global Head of Investor Research and Policy. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you.